Welcome back, I'm Andy Mack, and when I'm not doing this YouTube thing, I run a little cabinet making business where I make like alcove units and built-ins and custom furniture and that sort of thing. And a question that comes up a lot is, how do you take something from an idea in the customer's head or perhaps just a thing that they might have seen on Pinterest or something and take that into a final design that I can show the customer and then actually build it and price it up and turn it into a viable job for them. Like how do I decide on the spacing between shelves and the height of the alcove units and how big the doors need to be and all the little decisions that you've got to make before you cut a single piece of wood. Is it based on set formulas or do I just make it up as I go while doing the actual build? So in this video, I'm going to try and explain all of that from my perspective. And I'm going to take you through an actual job from beginning to end. So literally from my initial scribbles of measurements from the first site visit, right through the full design process on SketchUp and then you'll get to see some pictures of the finished job at the end of the video. I'm on my posh mic today, so I can get in, really. And if you want to know how much an install like this costs, there's a much more detailed pricing video over on my Patreon, where I go into the build in a lot more detail and I do a complete breakdown of all my costs, all of my material costs, exactly what I've had to buy for the whole project, and exactly what I charged the customer. And over on Patreon, it just means I can make slightly longer videos and videos about content that probably wouldn't do very well on the main channel, but over on Patreon, I can go into certain topics in a lot more detail, especially things like my actual pricing of a job that I wouldn't really want to put on the main public channel, but I'm more than happy for that to go out to my Patreon supporters. So you're joining me on this job where I've done the first initial site visit and I've taken some measurements of the room. I've also taken some pictures and I've been given a very open design brief from the customer in terms of what they want. And that is that they want enough room for a minimum of a 50 inch TV on top of the left hand alcove unit and they want three floating shelves on the right hand side and two floating shelves on the left hand side. They would like the lower units to have solid oak tops on them. They're going to be getting their own decorators to paint everything else white. And other than that, I've pretty much got free reign with the design. So let's get started. Right, the dreaded blank page in SketchUp. So I'm just going to start off with a line tool. I'm going to rough out the internal dimensions of the room first of all. So L for line. I'm just gonna go from the origin point coming out 1630. Now this is one of these awkward ones where in real life, one alcove is slightly deeper than the other. But for argument's sake, I'm gonna treat them both the same and I'm gonna treat them at 385, 385. And then we're coming along 1600, back in 385, along 1540. And then we'll come up this way a bit just to give the room a bit of depth. We'll make the walls, uh, we'll make them 300. Now, just to complicate matters slightly, up in this corner here, we've got a bit of an inset bay window thing going on. It's where well, it's not a bay window, but it's um, it's shutters. So it's going to start at this corner, and it's going to come up four nine five, and then it comes out on the green axis about one hundred and twenty. It juts down about one hundred and fifty. And then it comes in at an angle. Right, that'll do. We're going to push pull this up to give it some height. It's going to come up to 980. It's always good to try and get the ceiling height in. An annoying line we don't need there. I'm going to 
turn that into an object just in case I accidentally muck it up. What I'm then going to do, I'm going to go underneath and just pop a floor on. Again, doesn't really have to be particularly accurate or anything. It's just to give it a, a base to work off. I'm not going to put a ceiling on because it'll just turn into a pin in the back side. But what I am going to do is mark the fireplace in. So we've got a fireplace, which is 275 on the left, 870 high. And then what I'm going to do, if I double click this back component, so I'm coming in the 275 on the left there, and then I know it's 1050 wide. So I'm just going to snap onto the guide that we we'll put at the top there and then do 1050 comma. I'm just going to push it back a little bit just again to give it some depth. Obviously in here we've got like a fireplace thing going on. Delete all guides. Over on the left here we've got a window. Now I haven't measured the height of the window but I have got a photograph of it so I'm just going to roughly work off that for now. And again I'm just going to double click on this, do the rectangle out from that height. As I say, it's not critical, it's just to give it an idea of what it's going to look like. It's quite a high window, this. Bring it up to there. We'll push pull that out. We'll come out of that object and I will add some glass in from the other side. Turn that into some translucent glass just to get the general idea that there's a window there really. I think what I might do, all surrounding this window is wood and that's going to have quite a big impact on what this is all going to look like so I am going to just add an overlay to show the wood. Really simple, I'm just going to draw a rectangle down there, push pull it out. Again we'll just come out 20 mil Make that into an object and we'll find some wood. Right, so just to get a rough idea of what this is going to look like, I'm just going to pop a couple of rectangles in this corner just to kind of get a vague feel for how this is going to look. So I've already discussed with the clients these are going to come out about 440 from front to back so I'm just going to do comma 440 and then we're going to bring it up for the minute 800 and see how that looks. 800 is quite high for a lower unit but this room has really high ceilings so I think it can probably get away with it. So all I want to do now is just have a, a look at the room and see how this is going to actually kind of look because everything's going to hinge on the height of these cabinets. We are going to have floating shelves above these. I haven't quite decided where they're going yet but I think I will mark those in. Now one thing I do have to allow is enough room on the left here for a 50 inch TV. So I've just checked and a 50 inch TV should be about 1107 wide and about 622 high. Should give a diagonal of about 1270. Let's check. Perfect. Okay. So we'll push pull that out. Make a TV. So for getting the shelf height, that's going to be fairly critical on this TV size here. So on that basis, how high are we? 673. Okay, I think to allow a bit of space, let's make the first shelf on the left hand side 700. And it's going to come out. 320 we've said. I think that needs to go a little bit higher. Let's bring it up by 30 mil. I think that can come up higher still. 
Let's bring it up by another 70. And then that means the bottom gap's now 800. Bearing in mind, we don't know how big the stand is for this. So, if we're going 800, that would mean 400 to the bottom. It's going to look too... Okay, we're going to go a 500 gap between shelves, I've decided. I'm going to start on this side. Tape measure. 500. Another 500 gap. These are getting too close to the ceiling now. I'm going to have to make this gap smaller. I'll go 450. So bearing in mind on the left hand side we're going to have the two shelves. I need to align that to that one. And then we're going to have a missing shelf where the TV is going to go. We'll go for that for now. And if the client's not happy, we can always tweak the, the shelf height, but it's just to kind of get a vague idea. I think around that is going to look pretty good. So, tape measure from there to there is 944. Doki. So, that's looking pretty good so far. I now need to work out what we're going to do for these alcoves because I think having just two doors in these I don't think it's going to look right. I think these might need three doors. What we've vaguely discussed with the client is having some open shelves in the middle perhaps. I think at this stage what I'm going to do I'm going to print this off on a front view and I'm going to have a little bit of a scribble on this to try and work out the proportions of what's going to go on at the front here. Okay, so I did a few scribbles on the printouts and I ended up settling on this sort of layout for the lower units. Sketching it just means I can run a rough design past the client before working on a more detailed design, so it saves a lot of time in the long run doing it this way. So just to explain some of the design decisions I've made here, I settled on the 800mm for the height of the actual alcove units. I just thought that looked right for the space in relation to the ceilings. 800mm is quite high for the lower units, but if there were any shorter than that, they wouldn't look right next to the great big tall skirtings that we've got running down the right hand side of the room. So not only am I taking into account the ceiling height, but I'm also taking into account the skirting height as well. I ended up going for 80mm rails and styles on the doors. That's something I'll have a play around with when I'm doing the detailed design in SketchUp. But once I've added the mouldings in, it's going to beef that out a bit anyway. So I think 80mm should be fine. And I've also gone for 100mm offset from the chimney breast on both sides. So we've got a 100mm gap here and here. The spacing between each shelf obviously needs to be the same. So the gap here needs to be the same as the gap here and the same as the gap here. Ended up settling on the 450mm, which just looked right in relation to the gap between the top shelf and the ceiling. And then when you're doing alcove units like this, even though we're skipping a shelf over here to allow for the TV, we still want the next two shelves to be perfectly in line with each other. So working on the constraint that there was going to be at least enough room for a 50 inch TV, that's how I got to the 450mm gap between each shelf. Any more and the top shelf would end up being too close to the ceiling any less and the gap at the top here would end up looking unusual and you'd run the risk that you wouldn't have enough room for the TV going into the gap on the left hand side. The other slight complication here is that the left hand alcove is quite a bit wider than the right hand alcove. Now the gap between the chimney breast and the doors 
obviously needs to be the same on both sides, otherwise it'll look weird. And the doors and shelves on this side need to be exactly the same width as the doors and shelves on this side. So the only option that we've got is to leave a bigger gap on the left hand side of these units here. And luckily we've got this inset housing here from the window shutters and that will disguise that bigger gap on the left so you'll really not notice it. So I showed this rough sketch to the client and they were happy with this and it gave them the flexibility to get a bigger TV if they wanted. So it's time to put together a detailed design of the lower alcove units. That'll be more or less a full virtual build of everything in SketchUp so that I can make all of my mistakes before I cut a single piece of wood. It also lets me plan the whole build process in my own mind so that I can make as much as possible in the workshop before heading to site. There's not much more to tell you about the design process so I'm gonna just time lapse through this final stage of the design and I'll join you again in a couple of minutes. There we go, I'm pretty happy with that really. The client's gonna be using these center areas here for wood storage. So I didn't wanna go for a painted finish in here cause it'll just get trashed with pulling logs in and out all the time. So I've decided to go for solid oak shelves in this section and a solid oak top and then that'll have a bead around the edge to give it a kind of false thickness if that makes sense. And effectively, this is three separate units per side, and I should be able to do it in such a way that even though the left-hand alcove is bigger than the right hand, I can keep all the units exactly the same size. So a unit here, a unit here, and then a unit here with the shelves in, and this will have adjustable shelves, well, two adjustable, a bottom fixed shelf, which will be solid oak, and then there'll be an adjustable shelf in each cupboard on the sides. Obviously it'll have soft closed doors and all that sort of thing. And then exactly the same on this side. I've just kind of roughly shown a, a slightly shorter skirting that'll go on the front here. It, the skirting that's in, it's really, really tall, but it is a kind of OG style. So I'll just go for a shorter OG skirting along the bottom here and it'll follow around. I haven't shown it follow around, but it, it would, it'll follow around with a mitre on that corner. There'll be a bead coming up this edge here, which I haven't shown and that'll just cover up that join. We should be good to go. So what I'll now do, I'll just um, create a few scenes to show the client. So we're going to go from, that will be the starting point. Should 
do the job. I'll render that down, send it over the client, just show it to them via a hidden YouTube link. And uh, if they're happy with that, I'll do final pricing up and uh, get it booked in. So the customer was happy with that final design. I've tweaked the colours to match the final decor of the room. So here's some before and after pictures of the final job. Needless to say, they did go for a slightly bigger TV and their AV setup sounds amazing. If you pop over to my Patreon, I've uploaded a full walkthrough of the actual installation over there, along with full job costings and what I actually charged the customer. So if you do want to know how much a job like this costs, then you can get access to this and all of my past job costing videos over there. Link in the description. On Patreon I can go into stuff in much more detail than I can on the main public channel. I hope you found that useful. I shall see you next time.